So it's like we're slowly creeping in inch by inch. But there are other countries, particularly the European countries, that have been using these devices in some form or another for decades. Many of us grew up in an environment where seeking self-wellness was not encouraged or explored, leaving so many to find our own way to get reconnected with self. Audra Woodley, a former Pentagon program manager, has discovered ways to reduce stress and restore her own mind-body wellness. Now she helps others to do the same using multiple types of vibrational therapeutic devices. What are the frequencies in our internal systems and external as it relates to our biofield or morphogenetic fields, energetic field, most familiar to most people? Mm -hmm. Then we have to take that all into consideration to suggest that if any disruptors were to happen to create an imbalance in any of these spaces, then what do we need to do or what can we do to bring balance back to that? This is Karma Hub, exploring vibrational healing, wellness, and the practitioners that offer it. I've worked the B2, I've worked F22, I've worked F16, I worked light air um, support, I've worked uh, foreign military cells, and a number of small aircraft uh, uh, unmentionables, and then our latest and greatest uh, program of record, which is called Next Generation Air Dominance. I was part of the initial team that wow. actually made that into a program of record, and that just simply means that's a program that takes a look into the future forecast um, out about 40 years of where we need to be with our um, uh, fighter and bomber explorations. And now you do healing work. And now I do <laughs> healing work. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that, that, that is an interesting twist or combination, I guess you would say, like how do you make that adjustment? And this is going to go back to my childhood. Childhood was a lot of trauma and what I would consider unresolved trauma, you know, coming from a generation of parents who really didn't discuss and talk about these kinds of things. So there really was no outlet to get those kind of, to, to actually get the infrastructure or the touch points that you need to even help you walk through these icky spaces. And the reason why I say it's interesting, so just hang with me a little bit here, yeah. is because I ended up in these secure spaces at work. And I'm just being very careful, but at the same time, I came into the industry where, at a time where if you were uh, cleared for classification, you really were monitored very strictly. So I'm saying this because if you, say for instance, stepped out or reached out for a touch point for therapy of such, in the 90s, the whole terminology of therapy was not um, a fancy tool at that point in time. Right. There were really psychiatrists and psychologists were the only ones of existence back then. If you went to a psychiatrist, you would automatically have your security strip, hmm. your classification strip oh, really? for the most part. Wow. And, and I say that to not suggest that it's absolute, but I say that to identify that you would definitely be going through a more scrutiny type of um, uh, regimen at that point in time. Right. So I didn't do that. I self-medicated and by self-medicated, meaning I had, I considered myself like a functional depressive. Mm -hmm. I knew how to hide and cover it. Um, I went to work every day. 
I integrated with the people. Um, I integrated with the industry. I did my job magnificently, I'd have right. to say. Um, but I came home and the home hours were the depressed hours. So I stayed mm -hmm. at work very late most days. Mm -hmm. And then it became a very stressful environment for me because over time where initially it was fun, um, it paid the bills for sure. It was an admirable career. But as time progressed, it became obvious that I had needs and I had no way of knowing and understanding how to navigate that safely. So I kept it close hold the whole entire time. Everybody has a story and I felt like, I feel like I've done great work for our country. I've done it to the best of my ability and I have trained so many people, so many of our uh, military men and women as well um, to be the best that they can be to support um, our programs and our country. So right. with that said, it's funny that you would mention how you got introduced because I was a bit of a naysayer as well. But I started getting into the holistic modality space when I got a dog. Really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so here's the fun part of the conversation, and that is I did everything for her that was holistic. And hmm. I used to get blasted for it because, and I'm just going to put this out there. I mean, I'm a very real and open person. You know, they, they, I would, my friends would say, you know, black people don't do these kinds of things with their dogs, right? <laughs> I was cooking her food organically. She was going to acupuncture. Wow. So fast forward, I started introducing that into my own behaviors, of course. How could I, like, treat my dog one way and not treat myself the same? Um, you know, visiting some of the NIA around here, the NIHA, mm -hmm. um, and just other um, institutions that were... Um, Those guys are great over there. They're very great, yeah. So that's how I moved forward, and that's how, coming back to the story, that's how I was able to put Band-Aids on my own trauma, okay? Because I still felt like I was doing something for myself. In this particular case, if it was just the physiological health, that was better than nothing at all. But I read every self-help book you could possibly think of that's out there. I had a whole bookcase of self-help books, some that are still there, but the most I've gotten rid of I felt like I, that's a period beyond me at this point. Mm -hmm. I just made it my mission to find ways to heal myself. But when you don't really have a touch point to be able to express yourself verbally, there's always still a bit of a blockage there. So needless to say, I think you get the point uh -huh, at, at this point. So. <laughs> the stress then just began to build up tremendously. I just only knew how to do one thing, and that was to work in the environment that I had become accustomed to all of my life. I didn't know how to make a transition and then also be able to sustain the lifestyle, sustain the support you're giving to other people. Well, so based on what I see around here, it looks like you have a pretty good plan, and it's one of healing and bringing people back to like a home homeostasis state. Honestly, what the tipping point was, I was sitting at work and I probably was uh, surfing on the internet, oh. <laughs> right? Yeah, right? And um, out of nowhere, just flashing, Quantum University just mm. popped up. It just kept coming up, coming up, coming up. I don't know why or, you know, what, what initiated that by way of, because I never searched on Quantum University. And then something just said, look at their curriculum. 
So I looked at the curriculum and instantly I fell in love. Fell in love. And for anyone who may not know, Quantum University essentially um, is based in quantum theory with some quantum physics associated with it that has to do with um, quantum what's called quantum medicine and essentially that's just a fancy way of saying we're understanding energetically what's happening um, in your body at a cellular level. Okay. So yes. Vi vibrational therapy. Exactly. Right. So that's how I got here today. Okay. And then <laughs> going through the curriculum, coming across biofeedback mm -hmm. and fell in love. If we're suggesting that mass, anything of mass, has an energetic property to it, then we have to consider the fact that your human body and its all of its internal organs has some kind of energetic property as well. That being said, if any of those internal parts were to become disrupted or uh, infiltrated or become vulnerable, then we have to figure out, based in that equation, which is consideration of vibrational frequency, then what are the frequencies in our internal systems and external as it relates to our biofield or morphogenetic fields? energetic field, most familiar to most people, mm -hmm. then we have to take that all into consideration to suggest that if any disruptors were to happen to create an imbalance in any of these spaces, then what do we need to do or what can we do to bring balance back to that? Mm -hmm. In my view, people should be more open to understanding where we fit in this whole universal eco ecosystem okay. and how we navigate in that space and how we're interconnected. For instance, we always hear things about being grounded and the benefit of, you know, mm -hmm. properly grounding our systems and what it can do to our internal systems to bring it back to health and balance. Well, if that's the case, and that's based in physics, we talk about electrons and protons, and you know, if one is, you know, over yeah, here and over there. There's an electrical change that actually takes place in the body, <clears throat> and that's easy to, to read, to map, when you put your feet on ground. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when that electrical um, change takes place, you can actually see it in the blood. The blood can then move more freely. Um, I actually, I, I created my own like grounding sheets, grounding awesome. uh, pads. Uh, boy, it must have been 2008 really? before they were really around. I don't think they were around then. How'd you do that? Um, I just had some copper fabric and then I grounded it to an outlet and then I put it on my bed. And wow, it really, it really made a difference. I, I needed it. I was going through a lot of stuff at that time. Mm -hmm. So I used it a lot. And then it kind of went by this wayside. But then you fast forward 13 years or so, and I'm seeing them advertised everywhere, like grounding sheets. Because people don't get grounded these days. Um, and, and we should, because there's a, like a physical, electrical change that takes place in the body when you get grounded. Exactly. And people don't, I mean, yeah, people just aren't, aren't uh, exposing themselves to that anymore. And you make those are valid points, because if, that's in fact the case, and that's based in science. It is. Then why aren't you believing the power of your subtle energetic well, I, body? I, well, I feel like a lot of this, you know, there's not a whole lot of big money behind most of this stuff. That's the reason. And I think that's most of it. And that's, I think, the reason that we see more of it these days, because be, before we were kind of limited to what people paid to put on TV. Now we're not limited to that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, YouTube, TikTok, you know, whatever you choose to watch, <laughs> there's anybody and everybody posting stuff and they post what they believe to be working or what has truly helped them. Um, 
and so there's just this better degree of communication outside of the uh, capitalism mm -hmm. that's taking place. Mm -hmm. And I want to be first to say this. I completely believe in conventional medicine. Right. If something were happening to me and I needed to get to a hospital, I wanted to be right. fixed as, po as quickly as possible. However, we're talking the melding of conventional with alternative and or complementary. Right. And the purpose of alternative and complementary, more so complementary, is to hopefully sustain the body as long as you can to avoid a prognostic need, which would have to be looked at from a conventional standpoint of view. But as you mentioned, which is very much a strong point, is there's no money in that. I'm speaking from a perspective of if I'm taking care of you from an alternative or complementary standpoint of view, then I'm not flooding money into Big Pharma on the conventional side. Gotcha. That's what I'm referencing. And so there's no money in sustainability of the individual because if he or she is taking care of themselves, well, then there's no exchange of some money. So in layman's terms, biofeedback is the use of um, what we call different devices. It could be anything from a heart rate monitor, a Fitbit, a glucose prick, um, any of those kinds of things that would give you information about what's going on in your physiological body. Okay. okay. Once you get that data, Say, for instance, you're using that. It's telling you something. It's giving you information. And it's either going to be positive, or, uh, we'll loosely use the term negative, but perhaps it's negative, or at least it's not as positive as you'd like it to be. So what do you do? You then make the decision on how to course correct, correct? Okay. So that's biofeedback. Quantum biofeedback or quantum biofeedback devices are a little slightly different in that w it's energetically detecting the information that's happening on a cellular level. There are devices that um, can be as obscure or vague, I would say, rather, um, where it's just giving you high level information. It's not that um, specific. Or you could use devices that are actually getting to, for instance, ones that I use, tell you the exact vitamin, the amino acid, the mineral, environmental toxicities such as hydrocarbons, or say for instance, interferences from cell phones, EMFs, frequencies. Do you have anything like that? I do. And what is that called? So I have several, because they use, they're three different type of detectable or modality-based detections. Um, to determine what's going on in your body. There's one, it's called the Genius Insight. Genius Insight is amazing. It's a database, really works off of an app. You're using an iPad and it's all these built-in, hundreds of built-in frequencies. And it's giving you a readout of what's going on in your body by way of voice. I've heard of that. So That's interesting. that is very interesting. So yeah. we start off with determining your aura and the aura has a lot of, um, I'll put it in terms of overarching holistic information. So the genius you're talking about works with evaluating your aura also? It has, yes. It det so through, through listening to your voice. So through the voice, you give it a sample of your voice and then it, basically provides you a listing of all of the frequency high and lows of where these different uh, levels are in your body. So okay. anything from meridians, chakras, today's stresses, neurotransmitters, anything going on in the brain, body, and the mind. Can you talk, can you speak to the science behind that at all? So 
Uh, a couple weeks ago, you, you, you saw my um, video on the harmonic egg. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, a very large oh, device. Yeah. Now, what's cool about your devices is they're very portable. Mm -hmm. This is not. It's a huge thing, and you get inside of it, and it's like being inside of a guitar. You have amazing <laughs> sound therapy, right? Okay. It's amazing. And then also light therapy, and it does great things to you. But before and after this, um, the egg, I did this thing called the BioWell. And it scans the aura in your fingertips, mm -hmm. which is new to me. But uh, I would have to say, based on its findings, that it's very accurate. Um, and it reads the energetics in your whole body. Um, kind of like, you know, acupuncture, you've acupun acupuncture points. And I guess my understanding is that everything throughout your body can be determined and read through your fingertips. Some print. And that's that's what this device this device does. Mm -hmm. Now that same person that was talking about how great that particular device is, called the BioWell, mm -hmm. he mentioned something that an app on the phone where you just speak into it. And um, it does very much the same thing. And but that's that that's for me a little bit more of a leap. Like reading the aura and your fingerprints. Whew, okay, so that's one step. <laughs> Right, and then something to be able to read the energetics throughout your body based on your voice. That seems like another big step, and I'm I'm curious as to how that works. Several people who have actually um, done the work to come up with a measurable result of what the frequencies are of different say for instance, associated body organs, um, different um, um, situations of such. For instance, when I was making the example of laughter, sticking a bunch of people, like hundreds of people in a room and having them all laugh, mm -hmm. and you measure what the frequency is of that. And then that becomes, or did, or has become, what the universal frequency for laughter is. And then that is like the groundwork or the foundation for the technology that is used in these different um, devices in order to provide you an accurate display of what is or isn't in balance. So if, you, if it's then searching by way of use of a biomarker, if it's searching for the laughter biomarker or the laughter frequency in your body and it notices that there's some variance in that, then that then determines that you're out of balance in that space. I wanted to take a brief moment to go over some of the devices that Audrey uses with her clients. So hi, I'm here to introduce to you some of the, but not all of the devices that I use in my practice. These two here are what we call our meditative headgear devices. This one is beautiful. It's called the Muse. And what you do is you place it on your head. There's these little diodes or, or say platelets that actually can detect mind, body, heart, and breath. So it's really giving you information as it pertains to the state of meditation upon which you should um, experience. This one kind of does the same thing, headgear, but it uses both audio and light. So notice the light diodes here. You place it over your head and then the lights will kind of blink as you're meditating. Of course, not opening your eyes, but it too is providing you just a deep state of meditation, really relaxing the body. And then we have what's called the Zytal Compass. The Zytal Compass, I mentioned earlier, is this platelet here. You notice different finger platelets, placing your hand on here, microcurrents are sent through your hand. You don't feel them, but they're penetrable. And what they do is they kind of seek out imbalances in your body and then provide you this beautiful report by way of an aggregate display. And the aggregate display will uh, tell you how to course correct whatever imbalances are existing in your body. This one, oh, but back to here, 76 different biomarkers. 
This one here, the cell well-being, it's reading 800 biomarkers. So you say, why do you have a 76 and then you have an 80, 800? Well, because I like for them to be complementary of one another because when I do that with the client and they see that the information is very cohesive, then they're actually more convinced that this information is accurate. So this one is a hair strand pull. Place the hair strand onto the console. It sends the information to a lab in Germany. You get that report back and guess what? Only 15 minutes. And in that report, you'll see something like this. This is just the top line because it's a 30 plus page epigenetic report. It's giving you a display of imbalances in all the areas of uh, uh, minerals, vitamins, amino acids, environmental toxicities, hydrocarbons, all those kinds of things. And it's giving you specifics. So the actual vitamin, the actual mineral, who does that, right? But anyway, this is a nice report. It's telling you food restrictions, those systems that may possibly be out of alignment and how we can course correct those systems to get it back into balance by way of supporting with nutritional uh, uh, input as opposed to supplemental input. Because a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't want to take supplements anymore. I just want something that's natural. Well, that is based in your food sources that brings homostasis back to the body and it's based in on a 90 day detox. This one here works very similar to some of the others, but it's a wearable. This is called the Healy. So I literally can clip this onto my body. I use it by way of an app on my phone. And what happens is the app is full of a multitude of different healing frequencies, for instance, for pain, for hormonal balance, uh, uh, energetic balance holistically, uh, all kinds of different mod modalities that you might be trying to recover from and you wear it. And the scans will go on from anywhere from 30 minutes on up to an hour or so. This one, very similar to the Healy. Only thing is it's not wearable and there are thousands of frequencies that are embedded. Look at this. So this gives you an idea of the kinds of categories that it falls under, biofield, anything under the body, and then the mind. So look at the body alone, essential oils, hormones, sensitivities, but guess what? It goes even further. So I click on hormones. It's giving you the exact hormone and they're identified by these reds or blues down at the bottom. And what that means is ooh, ooh, the reds are indicators of things that may be going on today, chronically. The blues identify those things that have been long term. So say, for instance, down here at the bottom, you see glucogen, those kinds of things. That, those are the areas that you might have some long term effect from that you need to spend a little bit more time on. And what you do is you move all of those frequencies down to the bottom where you see main hold tray and then you run a scan for anywhere up to 30 minutes, okay? And then it gives you a result and hopefully you will get a beautiful, beautiful balance of the body. And then last but not least, and I say not least because there's still others, but this is what we're featuring. This is called the cryon or creason is how, really how they uh, pronounce it. And what this is is an extender crystal that's placed on the end there's a number of crystals that come with this console because each crystal has some type of healing property associated with it. And again, it goes by way of programming and setting the timer type of deal. And you run it along whatever that ailing body part is. Say if you said you had a pain in your elbow. So by just using that circular motion or up and down motion, you're sending that healing light ray into that area. And then it's providing some healing aspect to that. So this is what I use. And back to the discussion. Of course, there's never going to be anything exacting, but even in the conventional space, there's nothing that is exacting. The data True. is what drives the process. The data is what drives the, 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 you know, the direction that you think you should tread down. Well, these devices are similar. Even if you're just talking simplistically a Fitbit or a heart rate monitor or a blood pressure machine, the indicators are giving you just that information that's telling you, you may need to go down a different pathway. 
in order to bring health back to the body. Mm -hmm. And so, again, if you're not so far along where you actually have a prognostic disease and you're able to get information from these devices, and even if you are do have a prognostic disease, but you're able to get adjoining information, why not go down that route if it means not being cut open, if it means not being drugged with toxic you know, components in your body, right. why not try a different avenue? And here's why I think a lot of, lot are discouraged. And let's be real, it takes longer. It takes longer and there's no getting around that. You didn't get there overnight. It's not gonna be an overnight journey to reverse it. And I, if we spent more time in what we see, when we look at TV, these images and these messagings that's coming to us, that herbal intake, natural remedies, going through those processes are benefiting or would be beneficial to us, I think we would then become a more sus, uh, uh, accepting um, unit. Yeah, so I, I do agree with you that many times it does take longer. It's not like popping a pill and having a instantaneous gratification. There are many scenarios in which, in which someone um, has one of these therapies. Um, even me, for example, going to the harmonic egg, I came out of that just beaming. Um, and I felt it, the BioWell device that read my energy um, also recognized it. Um, but I hear countless stories of people that get some sort of energy work, whether it's Reiki or by some of these devices that you have, that they, they, it is instantaneous. So yeah, typically it's, it's not, but many times it, it can be, it can, it can grab a huge um, onion layer, so to speak, and just rip it off and you're done with it and it's over and done with. And it's, it's so amazing to see that sort of um, quick response based on energetics. Yeah, I see where you're going with this. And I just wanna be clear, when I speak of perhaps not having an immediate response, I'm referring to after you've already had a prognostic disease. Gotcha. But if you're in a sustainable mode, then you're going to see instantaneous or you are more susceptible to feeling something instantaneous. So I'm in violent agreement with you there. Violent yeah. agreement. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have to remember that one. Right back. <laughs> um, uh, so you mentioned uh, stress a little earlier. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how these devices can maybe help you cope with it? We know of stress symptomatically from a, per a perspective of pain, um, headache, dizziness, creating gut issues. Any of those symptomatic factors but we also know and understand that if we are energetically exposed to stress on a constant basis, it goes beyond the symptoms and evolves into some type of serious ailment. You know of them by way of heart attack could be anything from in the brain from Parkinson's to Alzheimer's. And the point that is most prevalent or relevant here is that this is not speaking from a perspective of complementary medicine. This is speaking from conventional medicinal facts, okay? Yes. So from just that standpoint alone, knowing that these are potential outcomes, if you 
keep going down the same journey, why wouldn't you want to use all of your superpowers to prevent them? Whether it's use of devices or even one of my favorite meditation, why aren't you using these modalities to reduce the effects of what stress has the ability to do? That's a good point. So you had mentioned just a bit ago that um, different uh, emotional issues can uh, affect different parts of the body. But they've actually mapped that now. And it's so neat that when you put yourself in the place of a particular um, em emotional trauma, it shows up often where your ailment happens to be. And they've mapped all that through, you know, electrical devices. Mm -hmm. So even like, e I've been down this road for a little while now, but when people were like, oh, wow, well, you know, it's emotional trauma, and that's what's creating the tumor in the right side of your body, even I had been a bit skeptical of that. Mm -hmm. I think I, I am a healthy skeptic, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, but now they've, they've mapped it, and it's, it's digitally proven mm -hmm. by these devices. Uh, many of these devices actually are found in hospitals. They just don't conventionally use those devices to meet this, to, to show these uh, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. outcomes. But I just think that's so cool. So real trauma can is a direct reflection, or rather your issue is a direct reflection of real trauma in the mind. Yes. And it becomes... Throughout the body. Mm -hmm. In the body. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. So, like, for instance, if... Let's say you have a knee injury or a leg. Let's, let's, let's go beyond a joint. Let's say you have a leg injury somewhere between joint to joint, right? Joint meaning ankle. But you don't know why that pain or that ache is there. People don't realize that there, there's an energetic component to that space. Mm -hmm. And why is there an energetic component? I don't. I won't say all, but most people are now accepting of acupuncture. So what do you think acupuncture is? It's the penetrable needle by way of that what we call meridian, okay? Mm -hmm. Or by energetic point, another name right. for meridian, that's releasing the what? The chi, the energy, the prana that's located in that meridian. Right. So yeah. here we come back to that same notion of let's look at things more holistically. Let's put all the components together in one bag as opposed to separating the bags, right? right? But just knowing that they become separate when you are not in balance. Hmm. Yeah. So you have a number of devices here that you work with clients on or with and but do they necessarily even need to come here so my understanding is a lot of these devices you can work with remotely that's correct just about i won't say all of them but a majority of the devices that are manufactured or created the concept in and of itself does not have to be in person you're speaking uh anything from some biological expression, whether it's voice or hair or some type of microcurrent expression, um, voice, oh, I said voice, they're able to extract that, for instance, by way of an external um, virtual component. Okay. And what I mean by that, for instance, with the cell well-being, which is what's used for the hair, I would literally send you a postal pack. You pull your own hair. Okay. And you Makes send sense. that in direct from your, you know, your point of reference. Um, using the genius, because that's used by voice, yes, the person downloads the app on their phone. So they cool. send the voice sample to you. 
I then do the scan on my end because I know what to look for and to determine right. which frequencies are best for you. I send those frequencies back to you by way of what's called a quantum capsule. You download them and you can play them up to a week as many times and for as long as you want to. So that means mm -hmm. you can benefit from the balancing uh, as frequently as you want. And then the what's called the zytocompass, which is the microcurrent aspect. I only, and um, specifically only uh, obtain the very basic version of that because I wanted to use that as complementary to the hair strand pool, not the other way around. Mm. So I just got the basic where you do have to be in person, but I could send that person a hand console or they too, I could then uh, obtain the app version of that too. And then they would literally do it on their end, again, voice, and run the scan and um, yeah, obtain the data. So most of these devices are working that way because that is the beauty of energy. It's never created or never destroyed, right? So there you go. Hmm. And that's So something? what do you see for the future of all of this? Um, I guess more specifically, how do you see Western medicine and vibrational therapy merging or, or do you at all? Oh, this train has left the station completely before, <laughs> you know, the violation was, you know, either getting disbarred or being put in prison or, you know, disbanded or whatever the case may be. But now, there's you you their controls are not there any longer so where we are today us is having a more i guess pushback and difficulty in fda approving many of them but aspects of them they can't deny so it's like we're slowly creeping in inch by inch but there are other countries particularly the european countries that have been using these devices in some form or another for decades yeah but the train has left the station there's no going <laughs> back yeah that's great <laughs> yeah um anything else that you could think of that you'd like to add why are you doing this? I'm doing this because this is the enlightenment that I received when I needed an alternative for my own health. If you want to get in touch with me, I go by Authentically Holistic and I'm on Instagram as Authentically Holistic. My email, I mean my, yeah, you can contact me at email AuthenticallyHolistic.com but then also my website is Authentically Holistic. <laughs> great, thank you.